Microphones plugged in. Airplane mode switched off. The area bum here of the bags. I'm coming very close to going round to my neighbour's house, taking that circular saw off him and ramming it up his backside while it's running. Hi and welcome to episode 63 of the Aria Bark podcast. My name's Caroline and I'm coming to you today from my home in Fife in Scotland. If you're a new viewer, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. It's great to have you here. As you can see, there is no Andrew again this week. Yes. There has been a lot of comments about how you love long podcasts. And where I don't disagree... A long podcast is good for knitting along with and stuff like that. Editing a podcast that is that long is horrific. It's not fun editing it and it's all, it's really no a lot of fun editing it when Andrew's there. There's a saying that goes, you make plans, something along the lines of you make plans and God laughs. Well, that is exactly how my week has gone this week. I had great plans of I was going to be doing this and I'll be working on projects alternate days and it'll be awesome. Didn't work the way I planned. Um, I'm pretty sure somebody up there was having a right good laugh. They may have possibly fallen off their cloud. I have managed to hit most of my goals, which is a good thing. Technically, I did hit all of my goals that I set last week, except one of my projects is now needing recast on. You can find detailed show notes on the Aria Bark website, which is ariabark.co.uk. We have our Ravelry group, which is the Aria Bark podcast. We have a private group on the website for anyone who would like to take part in make-alongs and char and other stuff. And you can find that by going to the community tab, then groups. We'll ask you a few questions, make sure that you're a crafter, and we will then send you an email to let you know that you're able to log in. We have an Instagram page, which is Aria Bark Designs. We have a Facebook page, which is Aria Bark Designs. And we have a Kofi. No Instagram, said Instagram. We have a Kofi page, which is Aria Bark Designs. We are currently running two make-alongs at the moment. The first one is the hashtag ABD Stash Mash 2022. It started on the 1st of January and ends on the 31st of December. You must be a member of either the Ravelry group or the private group on the website for your entry to count. Prizes are going to be drawn quarterly. Physical prizes for the F4 thread. The winner is chosen by random number generator. Mr. Bark and Andrew will choose an entry from the charter thread and those winners will receive a pattern of their choice up to the value of 10 pounds. Whips are allowed and multiple dipping is encouraged. If it can be measured in metres then it can be entered. So knitting, crochet, Tunisian crochet, spinning and weaving. Goals are at your own discretion. You can increase and decrease whenever you like and each person entering will have one FO thread post that all projects will be logged in. Our next make along is the hashtag Yappy and Scrappy Blanket Make Along 2022. Again, this one started on the 1st of January and ends on the 31st of December. You must be a member of either the Ravelry or the private group on the website for your entry to count. Prizes are drawn quarterly. Physical prizes for the FO thread. Winner is chosen by random number generator. Mr. Barkerander will choose entries from the charter thread and those winners will receive a pattern of their choice up to the value of £10. 
whips are allowed and multiple dipping is encouraged. The only rule for the blanket make-along is blankets must be a minimum of 16 by 16 inches to qualify and there's no maximum blanket size. That is entirely the crafter's choice. Make sure that when you're putting your entries into the FO thread that you also place them into the charter thread to double your chances of winning a prize. And so I can get back into the habit of going on and saying, your project's lovely, add it to my queue. Also, if you are going to be using the hashtags on Instagram, make sure that you are using the correct ones. They will always be linked down below or up above while we're speaking about them. Um, because if you use the incorrect hashtags, I won't see it. Is there anything else? That's it. This week we have Correction Corner and Whips. In this week's episode, it's just knitting and time stamps for each section can be found in the description box below. Last week, I had placed a bit in top of, at the top, up here, when Andrew was making a comment about raglans. Well, no. I was having a conversation about raglan increases. Andrew was having a conversation about something completely different. And I made a snide comment on the video up above. Um, it turns out that Andrew was not, well, it was wrong, let's be honest. What he was discussing was not raglan. Um, what it was called is raggle, which is to cut out a groove in masonry or a groove into which metal flashing can be fitted. So technically, he wasn't right. Let's be honest, he wasn't right. However, I would like to apologise for insinuating that I wondered how he managed to pass his qualification when he thought raglan increases had something to do with knocking holes in a wall. Oops. He's not here. He'll probably not watch this. So technically, his hard cheese. I can't be held responsible if he's not here for my apology. All I'm going to say. Now, I haven't added in finished objects because this technically isn't a finished object. It's only a half finished object. But my Lysiantha socks by Becky Norman. I have finished the first sock. The goal for last week was to get have at least the first sock finished. I may have possibly tried to overcommit and say that I would get the two of them done. But I have managed to get the first one done. This, obviously I'm going this way. This was where I was last week. I have got up the foot done. So that works out to be about here. Managed to get the foot down, uh, the pattern down to the foot. Now you do have an option in the Lysiantha socks that you can either do a wedge toe or a rounded toe. I did a rounded toe. I went to see if I can get it. I did the rounded toe. Not going to lie, rather proud of myself. I have not done a rounded toe before. And I am very pleased with how that's worked up. Um slightly pointier than I intended it to intended it to be. I was watching the video and got a little carried away and I maybe should have stopped increasing doing the plain knit round slightly sooner than what I did. It's not too pointy. I have tried it on with the stitch marker still in. That really wasn't a clever idea. Um, not comfortable to have a zebra stitch marker in your zebra Lysiantha socks and then try and walk on it. Now I'm going to stick them back on my fake foot. Um, I have woven in the ends on the toe 
I have not woven in the ends on the cuff. I'll do that before I block it. Now, modifications that I've made to the pattern, I have put in the basic socks with integrated heel, that's the integrated heel here, by Albina McLaughlin. I've done it exactly the way the pattern told me to do it. The only exception that I've done was after I'd done the integrated heel, I did do the measurement that Albina tells you to do before you put your toe in. Becky does say that once you've done your heel, you then repeat the pattern four times. I have repeated the pattern four times. Know that it shows up that way along that foot. It does, however, show up quite well when you do this, like that. So I've done the four repeats because obviously this is roughly where the heel finishes. So I've done the four repeats, then put the toe on. If I was to do it again, things I would not do, the bit at the side. I'm still not happy with this bit. I think what I would do is just take them out um, and possibly only do three repeats of the pattern so it's not because obviously if you see here it is literally finishing then the toe starting I would kind of like a wee bit of a break or maybe just stop it here and then do plain rows, then do the toe. It works. So the first sock has been done. Um, I had originally been doing them two at a time on a 32 inch cord. I decided to try and fix see it better here to try and fix this this is slightly more even because this is round about the point when I put it on a nine inch circular and the other side's the same so what I've done was take nobody needs to see me swinging a fake leg about so once I'd finished them I'd picked up the second sock and I was looking, and I was looking, I was like, I have absolutely no idea where I left off. So, I ripped it back to the cuff. I literally ripped it all the way back. Now, you have got a set up row to do on the first row. I've ripped it back to the cuff. That way it's going to be easier for me to see where, on which line the pattern's on. This is how much I've got left from the first sock. I, th I have weighed it and it works out to be 10.55 grams. So, nice wee nugget. I am using my Army Corner in shade Zebra. It is an 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon. You get 360 metres and 100 grams. I split this off into two 50 gram cakes. Got 10 grams left from the first sock. Well, I don't think it was exactly 50 grams on each cake, but. And this is the second one. I did have to rewind this because it's quite a way up the foot when I ripped it out. I am using a 9 inch, a 2.5 millimeter high higher sharp on nine inch circular i am just going to keep working away on it it is a fairly enjoyable project obviously you do have to make sure that you're moving your slider up as you're working on them um is there anything else hopefully by next week despite the fact that i said that i wasn't going to be setting any more goals Hopefully by next week I should get the second sock done. It's not a difficult pattern. My ability to follow a chart seems to be a problem. The Lysianthus socks are a paid for pattern on Ravelry. If there is anywhere else you can purchase the sock pattern, I will leave it linked in the show notes. 
and down below. My next project is my summer tea. The goal for this week was to, what was the goal for this week? Get the raglan increases finished. This is the summer t-shirt by Vera Sanin. I cannot get this to sit properly. This was where it was last week. That's the decrease, the empty, uh, clearly that's no decreasing. That's the rest of the increases being done. I have split off for the sleeves. I've just used these circular stitch holders. Now, I was pretty sure that when I purchased these, I purchased four long ones of these in two shorts. I cannot find the short versions. All I seem to find are about a dozen of these. So I've put the stitches on holders. Now, I very diligently checked and rechecked my increases. So I've got to the end I counted the stitches. Now I've got stitch markers. There's two stitches missing from this sleeve. And is it one? And one missing from this. Now I don't know what I've done. I have gone down let's see if you can see have gone down and checked my hand in. now the only thing I can see is there there's something not quite right obviously on the other side everything's perfect on this side Everything's perfect. Who knows? Um, I've not dropped any. Well, I've just dropped a stitch. I've not dropped any stitches. Everything all seems to be where it should be. I don't know. Um, all I'm going to do, I'm just going to fudge it. Let's be honest, I'm just going to fudge it. When I come to pick the sleeves up, I'll just make an increase here. And I'll make the one increase on this sleeve and then I'll have the right number of stitches um, it hasn't made any difference to the body um, all the stitches are there I've got my two stitch markers for the side and I'm just going to keep working on this this is actually this now is just I think it's docking it for five inches something like that I'm just going to keep working on that I would like to get to the waist shaping for next week um, I am using in my rather large bowl drops cotton merino it is shade 21 which is heather it is a 50% cotton, 50% merino, and you get 110 metres and 50 grams. That's clearly not a 50 gram ball. As I'd previously mentioned, I had originally purchased the cotton merino to make a top for myself. My niece decided she preferred that colour and wanted a dress. I started making the dress, then lockdown happened. And my niece grew six foot and the dress didn't fit her so I just ripped it out and I'm going back to using it as a top for myself and um, that's a 50 gram cake the plan my previous plan was to use up first use up all the balls that had been knit so that one and that one and that leaves me four 
to add in if I need them. The summer t-shirt is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. If there is anywhere else that it's available, I will leave them linked as well. Is that everything? Yes. And now I'm going to stick these all in and keep everything together and that way I'll not lose ball bands again. My next project is the Bridge Before Home Cowl. I have made slightly more progress on this project than I had done the previous week. Didn't um, quite meet my goal which was to complete four or five more repeats. However, this was where I was last week, which as you can see is slightly more than the seven rows I'd put on the week before. I have done, where was I? I was there. So I've done one, two, three repeats. Don't know why that's still sitting there. Clearly I moved the wrong stitch marker. So I have done slightly more than what I've done what I did last week. This is an amalgamation of the Bridge Before Home Socks by Angela McGowan. I will leave that there and a picture there. These are a paid for pattern on Ravelry. If you're unable to use Ravelry, I'm sure if you speak to Angela, she'll just can come to some sort of arrangement. I loved those socks they are very rarely off my feet if this table wasn't so high i would show you because they're on my feet just now i am definitely going to be making another pair but i'm going to make them longer and the sock head cowl by kelly mcclure again leave bits up above and put a picture in the sock head cowl is a free pattern on Ravelry or you can also get it free on the Boho Knits website. I am using for this Knit Picks Felice in shade River Rock. It is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. You get 199 meters or 218 yards in a 50 gram ball. I have, that's me on the second ball now. Now where was I? I was somewhere, actually that's, I was down here when I put the second ball in. Now for this, because I had to do some maths, before that second ball went in, I had put in, was it five? About five repeats. So my plan is going to be, obviously this was, this is roughly where the second ball went in. So my plan is, is to do another five. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop after four repeats. So I'll do like another three repeats, then I'll weigh it because I do need to keep between 24 and 26 grams to do the ribbon at the other side. I'm not going to be too concerned if I don't, if I need to use that wee bit extra. I don't have to have the 45 rows that are in the ribbon just now. It would be nice if it was symmetrical. Life is far too short for me to be that picky. Obviously I'm not going to just go hammer and tongs at it and have it com look completely wrong. But I would like to keep it semi-symmetrical. I am using a 2.25mm for the ribbon and a 2.75mm higher higher sharp on a 16 inch cord for the body. My goal this week is to get the body finished. Now obviously this pattern is really, really quick to knit up. So it really shouldn't take me all that long. Now the wee bit that I done yesterday, obviously I did have to rip it back. Clearly I cannot participate in a Zoom 
and knit this pattern at the same time. Now, I have done it before. It seems to be that at certain times of the day, my brain just switches itself off. This was all done yesterday. Um, I have found, what was I watching? For the Lizzie Anthus socks, I had been watching was it Long Lost Family on the STV player. Or if you're elsewhere in Britain, it's the ITV player. I had been watching it on there on the recommendation of my friend Heather. Unfortunately, she'd come with a tissue warning. So I'd finished, I, had, I think I had about four or five episodes that I still had to finish. So I finished that and I was like, well, what am I going to knit on now? So I went looking and I thought, I'll start adding things because on it you can, I think it's called My List or something. Apologies. I'm sure it's my list and you can list programs that you want to watch. Well, I just keep having to use the search feature because I can never mind where it is. I managed to figure it out yesterday. Hit my list, your programs are there. So I was looking through to see what other programs that they had and they had a program called Crownies. Yes, which is an Australian legal procedural thing which is very good I am pretty sure at some point I have actually seen that on the TV because there's people in it that's like oh I can remember watching this I know for a fact I've not watched the full series um, but I am now it's really good so the two pattern repeats that I did get done on the bridge before home Cowell was done while watching that and it was rather enjoyable. I have said the Bridge Before Home Socks is a paid for pattern on Ravelry and the Sock Head Cowell is free on Ravelry and Boho Nats. Plan for next week is to have the body, the body done. Hopefully. If I can find some knitting time. I am on my last project. Who am I? Whew. Might be a short one this time. My next project had a lot of work put on it. Tons and tons of work put on it. However, right now, this and this is the sum total of my project. I'm going to stick a picture in of where I was last night when I ripped it out. This is Papillion by Svetlana Volkova. The goal last week was to have it cast on as per picture. You can see it was indeed cast on. I had managed to hit the goal of last week, which was cast on, what was it? Cast on and do the increases. I would like to say this is a very, very, very enjoyable pattern. However, on... Sunday or Monday night may have possibly been late Saturday night some early hours of Sunday morning I just could not for the life of me one think of what the neck was called now obviously I knew it was a neck but I could not figure out what you called the shape of this neck now I will stick a picture in from the pattern of how the neck's supposed to sit now, I knew that had a name. I could not remember what the name was. Therefore, I couldn't look up on how to get my two... Because you in the pattern, you do the front part of the neck and you do the back part of the neck and then you do some jiggery-pokery and get the two of them to sit together. 
Well, I tried it the way it was written in the pattern and I just could not for the life of me figure out what the designer meant. I would like to be clear and say it's not that the patterns weren't clear, the pattern wasn't clear. The instructions were extremely clear. I genuinely could not mentally work out how it worked. And obviously because I couldn't figure it out, I thought, right, do you know, I'll do what I normally do. If I don't understand something, I will search on YouTube. I will look and go, all right, yeah, I was right. I had done it, ripped it out, done it, redid it again. And it was like, I don't know. The main problem was I overthought it. And it meant that I started confusing myself. Then to add in that I couldn't remember what the neckline was called... So I went on the super group and I'd asked on there, does anybody know what this neck's called? Because I'd searched up on YouTube all the different kinds of necks and I could not find anything. I did find, because it was Gina that came back and said, is that not the envelope neck? And I searched that, but the only tutorials that I could find for an envelope neck we're all sewing ones. No, obviously, I'm not sewing it. I'm knitting it. Then the lovely Heather sent a message with a link to a tutorial for doing an envelope neck. Albeit that one was for a baby jumper. What? Perfectly. Looked through the tutorial and it was like, ah, I was right the first time the instructions make total sense. Duh. So I had done that. The next morning I go, I don't know what it was reading this pattern. I honestly, see starting this pattern off, you would have thought that I'd never knit anything before. Put a message on a group, on the group, saying, does anybody get this? This is what I'm asked to do. This is how it's written. Does anybody know how I'm supposed to go to the other side, but I'm working back the wrong way? I'm supposed to knit to X amount of stitches, which would be right if I kept going in the direction I was going. However, after this instruction, it tells you to turn it and go the opposite direction. Well, was I not reading two instructions for two separate things? Not only was I doing reading the instructions for the leaning increases, I had then mixed where that instruction stopped and where the wrap and turn instructions started and I literally read it right across and it's like I have to do a wrap and turn and it's like, what? So, managed on Monday, no, Sunday night, because we, um, we'd gone to Ryan's aunt and uncle on the Sunday afternoon. Came back, fixed everything, working great. Then on Thursday, I'd been working on it. And I'd got to the part where you stop just increasing the sleeves, you're going to increasing the sleeves in the body. And done all the increases, marked it all up. You'll see in the picture, I'll stick it back up again. I have stitch markers marking every single increase row to make sure that I did it properly. Got to the end of that section, counted it. I don't have enough stitches. I think you have to have like 200 stitches. I think I had 100 and... No, I had 192 and I was to have just under 200. And I was like, what? Now, the one part that I did genuinely think would be my downfall would be the lace pattern at the front. My lace pattern at the front was perfect not a mistake, everything was going the way it was supposed to go. I was 
not a happy chappy. I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll rip it back. I'll just unpick each stitch and get it back to the increases. Where you first start these increases. And then I thought, right, that's eight separate increases that are worked on alternate rows which means that's 16 rows that you're going to have to pick back. Then I was thinking, right, normally what I do is when I'm working on a pattern, it's like, you know for yourself if you're, some patterns will have what your stitch count should be. Obviously this is done in tables and I'd highlighted all the ones that I'm needing to look at for my size what I normally do is when I get to that par part and I count all my stitches, I will circle to see, or I'll put a tick through it, because obviously I do mine on Knit Companion. So if I'm needing to redo it, I can just use the eraser, take it all off, and, and that way I can leave the notes where they are. I hadn't ticked it. I know I did check it. Because I would never have went on had my stitch count not been right at the time. I'd been thinking about it and I'd been thinking about it. And I was sitting. Then I started doubting myself and I was like, well, I have I started looking through all my patterns that I'd been working on. And obviously there's bits where I circle this part and there's notes written here on the socks. And there's maths worked out on the Bridge Before Home sock pattern for the cowl. And it's like, why have I not circled that? Because I've done it for everything else. And I was like, did I actually have that stitch count or did I just think, she says I've got this many stitches, it's fine. And I thought, do you know what? I don't know at what, at what part I went wrong. I'm just going to rip it. I'm going to start, the decision was, do you know what, I'm going to rip it all out again, I'm going to put it in and I'm going to rework it. Now clearly because of the number of patterns that are on Ravelry, it's a problem with me. I still want to make the pattern. I did thoroughly enjoy working on the pattern. Unfortunately, I did not enjoy ripping it out. The problem that I had is I was working off of two cakes. Now, what I have done is I have wound it with the two, two strands together. That way it's going to be easier when I'm pulling it for the two that we come out together and I don't have to erase all. We're trying to keep two balls going at the same time. So what I'll do is while I'm editing this, well actually before I edit this, I'll cast on the collars. And obviously I'll knit on that while I'm editing, this, editing the, the video. Then while it's uploading, I'll cast on the other one and just do my bits while I'm waiting on it to do the video to do its thing. Yes, oh, yes, I've not even mentioned what it is. The yarn that I'm using is Denley Yarn Katrina in shade CG210, which is grey. It is 100% acrylic. You get 1,200 metres in 200 grams and it's 100% acrylic um, it's not molting as much as it was last week um, I have had it in my stash for a long long time um, I am going to be using a 3.5 and a 4mm drops classic or knit pro nova on a 
24 inch cord then a 32 inch cord goal is to recast it on and complete up to section 2 however what I'm going to do is after each section I'm going to stick a bit of scrap yarn in and use that as a lifeline that way if I do need to rip this back again I'm only going to be ripping back to the lifeline I'm not going to have to rip it all back obviously part of the problem was if I ripped it back to the beginning I'd, by that point I'd already done a couple of lace repeats so it would have been harder to try to rip a lace repeat back Um, Papillion is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. I am not sure if there's anywhere else that you can purchase the pattern. However, if I do come across it, I will always link it in the show notes or down below. So that is everything that I've worked on. I think completing three out of my four goals is not a bad thing. I would have preferred it if I managed to get all my goals done but considering there was other things going on and meetings that I had to attend to and phone calls that had to be made and other stuff I'm lucky I got that much done I'm still wanting to cast on Fairy Tale by Vicky Morose again same as last week I'd do fully intend to not do the heel flapping gusset and only do the integrated heel by Albina McLaughlin. They fit my feet perfect. They are so easy. No counting rows. You just do it until a certain amount. Then do you turn the heel and do you it back down. Gusset increases. That's what they were called gusset increases the plan will be to use my yarn corner mystery soap club from february which is during the war if i can get my lysianthus socks finished the plan will be to cast these on the fairy tale socks are a free pattern on ravelry um mandy did confirm that free patterns are welcome in the hashtag knitting with Ukraine make along and hopefully hopefully I remember to write down I have I have written down add to Alex's make along on my summer t-shirt because I've been working on it for a week and not added it on yet the plan will be to do them on a 2.5mm high higher sharp probably because of the lace detail a 9 inch, 9 inch circular but I won't be able to do that until I finish the Lysianthus socks um, do I have anything else lined up? I have 98 projects lined up that have yarn attached to them they have not all been cast on and um, I've not quite decided if I'm going to cast something new on or more than likely going to take something that's already started but I don't know what that is yet hopefully the socks will be finished for next week don't think either the summer tea or papillion will be finished for next week because I've, well, papillion's not even been started again so that is all my knitting content this week um what has been happening we did have a point an appointment with ryan's dad on wednesday um there's been a few appointments with ryan's dad this week admin for the podcast had pretty much took over last week hence why there's not as much done as I'd hoped Mr Burke has very kindly offered to help with that so obviously there is only so much he can do obviously a lot of it is going to need my input 
I think I need to get back into a routine of when stuff gets done. Um, that will mean that Andrew may or may not be on the podcast as regularly as he has been because normally what we would do is record whenever he showed up then I would edit the podcast upload it to YouTube do all the YouTube stuff do the show notes there's other wee edity bits that I'm going to do in YouTube which is taking a lot longer so obviously if Andrew doesn't come through t- until a Sunday by the time I do the initial steps which I normally do obviously like today is Saturday tonight I will edit the podcast I will upload try and upload the podcast to YouTube I'll do all the YouTube bits then I'll start on the show notes and get them all done on the website then I'll publish the video then I'll publish the show notes that's how it should work however if Andrew's not coming through until a Sunday it then means it's going to more likely be a Monday or possibly a Tuesday depending on how this other thing on YouTube goes before anything gets published no, so that's two to three days of no knitting or having very limited knitting which is not fun and I know one of the ladies has said well just don't edit no one needs to be listening to an hour of Andrew rambling on about his work nobody needs to be hearing the 20 minute bark fest that Aria has on a regular basis if someone walks past the window the thing I'm needing to do on YouTube takes forever I genuinely think Ryan thought I was having a laugh when I said it took me what was it four and a half hours to do a, t- a one part of a 20 minute video you like really really not when you nothing no I wasn't nothing I was literally as painstaking I don't think it would be so bad if our internet is, was not horrendous because you've constantly got to save it as you're going along and it's like it is so destroying but needs a must and unfortunately I am not made of money and therefore I cannot pay someone to do it for me and I would feel guilty because some of your videos are really long or at least try and get back into a pattern of having the show notes already done on a Friday. Again, we would be very grateful if you would like, subscribe and share our videos. Um, For anyone who does read the subtitles, Andrew does not have fetish projects. And I do not regularly discuss teeny tiny men's skins. We are trying to sort that issue out. Um, The last video has been checked and it is all correct. And credits have been given where they need to be. The only issue we have is with Albina's name I can't get the nope can't remember what they're called on her name done may possibly try and copy them off of Ravelry so try that out later if you would like to join Knit and you are more than welcome it is a Wednesday at 8pm British summer time and a Friday at 11am British summer time um, is there anything else I don't think so I hope you have a very very crafty week and we will see you back here again next week bye